Hi, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. Well guys, I tell you what, with Thanksgiving and the Christmas season and everything getting crazy at work, I just haven't had any time to get out in the shop and do you know some of the stuff that I'd like to do. Um, but I, I do have a couple things that I want to show you and, and I'll bring the camera here in just a minute and uh, show those to you and, and, uh, and I'm excited about some of it so we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but before I do that, uh, you, you recall if you've been watching my videos that uh, I had a user donate me a Harbor Freight 4x6 bandsaw and then uh, it was shipped via UPS and when it arrived at my place I left it up, left it in the battered box for several weeks while I continued to insulate and put up wallboard and stuff here in my shop. And then when I finally uh, got around to open it up I discovered that uh, the sheet metal was all bent up, things were, uh, screws and bolts were bent, but worst off was the uh, gearbox, um, the, the worm drive gearbox that uh, reduces the from you know the motor speed to the band uh, was sheared completely off. The uh, casting uh, housing was broke, and uh, so the user contacted me and said, "Hey, um, it's it's under warranty, or you know it's it's insured. Let's see what we can do about it." And, and I talked to UPS twice, and I kind of get the same question, same runaround. And it's been a few weeks now and I haven't heard squat from them. So I'm guessing that um, they're not going to do anything about it. And I'm just going to have to put it together and see what I can fix and whether if it's salvageable or, or whatever. And I'll go from there. And uh, I'll show that in future videos. So the lesson that I've learned is um, whenever I get a shipment from any carrier, FedEx, UPS, United States Postal Service, or whatever, uh, if it looks like it's, uh, if it comes in rough shape, I'm, I'm going to video the whole thing. And, uh, and that way, you know, that I got pictures of the damaged packaging. Uh, I got pictures of the contents on the inside, etc., etc., etc. So, um, you know, shame on me. I'll, uh, from now on, I'll definitely uh, do that. All right, so I'm going to set the camera up here, and I want to take a look at, I want to show you some of this uh, stuff that I got and where I plan to go with it and, and that sort of thing. So I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so uh, I've gotten a few things since my last video and since I uh, started working on the project that I just want to uh, go over a little bit. Um, I did find some uh, citric acid to make some pickle out of. I did get a couple of uh, bottles of that so that when I start working on the uh, copper boiler, I can, um, you know, uh, pickle it after it's been soldered. And uh, when I was making the fuel tank, you know, I had a, the only flux that I had was uh, some paste flux. It was, it was pretty tough working it and a lot, and way too much heat probably for what I had. So I went out looking for some, um, some um, liquid soldering flux and I found the soldering tinning flux. Uh, this is the only thing that I could find uh, locally. So I'm, I might try that and see how that works out uh, in the future. Um, I, but, you know, I'm kind of curious. You know, the old timers used, uh, I think they called it killed spirits, which I think was a um, sulfuric acid with zinc dissolved in it until it was a saturated solution. And I was wondering, um, you know, I can get sulfuric acid as battery acid from the auto place. And, you know, the... Uh, the newer um, wheel weights are zinc and so I was just kind of wondering, you know, is it possible to make my own killed spirits? Has anybody tried that and would they know the ratio? So that's a question I wanted to shoot out there. So in the vein of soldering, um, I was given a soldering iron. Well, actually I was given two soldering irons and you see this one's kind of bent so I'm going to straighten that out in a pretty rough shape, but I thought that uh, I would clean these up and tend them and uh, when I do the video for uh, soldering the cups, uh, the wick cups to the supply tube uh, that I would use one of these and uh, you know try it old school and see what happens because you know the flame that I have is a little too aggressive uh, but I think the smaller one uh, would do good and you know I might leave it bent. So. A co-worker gave uh, these to me. He said that years ago that he had a friend that was a, a, a roofer and he used to solder a lot of uh, copper roofs. So he said he had these and he, he said he would never use them. And I was welcome to it. And you can see that they have been laying around forever. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try cleaning them up. If anybody's got any suggestions on uh, care and use and 
these, uh, feel free to drop it in the comments. Otherwise, you know, I just might have to figure it out on my own. So let's get those out of the way. Um, the next thing, I've ordered a set of taps. These are 540 taps. There's a plug bottoming and a taper tap in there uh, for the uh, Kenneth Wells stationary engine. And I've ordered a 540 die right there. So, so I'm all set for that because I think most everything is 540, but I did have to get a, a tap handle. So I, I got that and I'm prepared. I'm prepared now to make some threads and tap some holes. So I got that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is um, 3D printing. Now, you know, my son has been on to me or begging me or bugging me, however you want to say it, for, I don't know, maybe three or four or five years about, hey, Dad, let's make a 3D printer. Hey, Dad, let's make a 3D printer. But I could never really see a practical use for one. Although, over the last year, I've seen situations where a 3D printer is kind of handy. So my son, he, uh, he, he gave up waiting on me to build one, so he bought one. And he says, here, I, I printed you out a couple things. So the first thing that he printed out was a spindle nose protector, right? Now, uh, this, uh, I'll show you this on the lathe here in a few minutes. Um, but it threads right on there, just as printed. It's got these uh, grippy knurls. And I think, if I remember right, Mr. Pete printed one of these out. Um, when he was talking about his 3D printed stuff. So in addition to that, uh, let me get the next item that Zach printed for me and bring it over here and I'll be right back. For the astute among you, you probably noticed this little plastic container sitting on the shelf up there behind my lathe and in it are gears. Now the, or was gears. The only thing left in here is a, a ball bearing and a couple of plastic gears, which I do want to try to do some experiments with. But what Zach says, hey, you need a uh, thing to put your gears on. So we printed this out and uh, it's pretty nice. It holds holds all the change gears. I am missing one gear. If anybody's got a 24 tooth uh, change gear for an Atlas lathe, uh, I'd be really interested in that. Uh, the only thing about this is that uh, I think that uh, the shaft really needs to be super glued into the base. But you see over here I got my extra bolt and stuff like that. So. Uh, that was pretty nice. So, you know, so I guess there are some practical uses uh, for 3D uh, printing. But I tell you what I think would be better than this is one of those racks that where you put the gears in sideways, you know, and it's got the little number down below them so you don't have to, you know, dig half the gears out and then put them back and all that sort of stuff. So I'm uh, ho hopefully we'll uh, get to go that direction. All right, so I got one more uh, thing that I want to share with you here. And... I've got uh, I got some posts from Australia, and what was in that post were a couple of stickers from Emma's spare room machine shop. Emma, thank you so much for the stickers. Uh, you know I don't I don't have a sticker board, so now I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to make one up and figure out where to put it in my shop and and uh, that sort of stuff, and and maybe. Uh, get some stickers of my own made but uh, Emma thank you so much for the stickers and in addition to the stickers is a little card uh, kind of like a little business card but it's got Emma spare room machine shop and that is just cool as can be so Emma thank you so very much for that but that was just bonus so what actually came in the package was this so Emma um, went ahead and cast the engine casting uh, for the Kenneth Wells stationary engine for me. Uh, and I think she's got a video on it, which is really cool to watch. Uh, maybe uh, I would suggest that you go watch it. Um, she done a she done a good job. So there's a little bit of flashing. I need some, need to fettle. If you're not familiar with that uh, term, that means to clean up. I need to fettle the casting, you know, from the uh, from the molding seams and and clean it out a little bit. But uh, that's uh, that's the main component of the engine. The flywheel sits on this side. The valve block sits right in here. And, uh, and so you have it in the uh, valve ports and stuff will come in back on this side. So anyway, Emma, thank you so very much for casting that and sending it to me. You are, you are a saint and, uh, I appreciate you for doing that and, and God bless you for it. So, all right. So the only other thing I'm gonna do here is, uh, I'm gonna 
get over by the lathe and uh, we'll, we'll show this little uh, spindle thread protector uh, uh, on there and, and then uh, we'll close out. So I'll catch you over there in just a second. Okay, so by now you're probably familiar with this little shelf I got sitting up here behind my lathe, but uh, you got to admit uh, that little, little stack of gears looks pretty good sitting up there. All right, so let's, uh, let's move over toward the headstock here and uh, let's try this out and see how the spindle nose protector works out. So again, here it is, uh, inch and a half, eight threads per inch. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> inch and a half, uh, eight threads per inch. Uh, it's got uh, some pretty, these are pretty aggressive knurls, but it, uh, as you'll see, whoop, after I throw it on the ground, because that's what I do, you guys are aware of that, but as you see, spins right on there, locks right down. Now look, I'll be honest with you, I would much rather have an aluminum spindle nose protector, and I'm still going to make one, but I also want to make an um, inch and a half by eight thread plug kind of gauge or whatever. That way, if I'm threading, um, if I'm threading uh, uh, internal threads, I have something to test the threads with, and then when I make that, I'll just use that as a thread protector. Uh, but uh, I wanted, I need a thread protector, you know, for my collet set. And I still need to make the knockout bit, and and uh, so we're going to have some machining videos here in in the very near future. I hope uh, that show making that stuff because I know Peter is always griping at me. Where are the chips, man? You're killing me. So, uh, speaking of Peter at PGS, if, uh, if you've not watched his Gingri uh, milling machine build, I strongly uh, urge you to watch it. It's uh, there's quite a few videos to it. Uh, he goes through a lot of detail. It's uh, actually just a very wonderful series to watch. So, uh, so let me reposition the camera and, and we'll close out of here. Well guys, I want to apologize again for taking so long to get a video out, but you guys know how this time of year gets with family and everything else. And, and, uh, hope, uh, for those in the United States, um, that celebrate Thanksgiving, hope your Thanksgiving went real well. Ours was something like Griswolds. So, uh, for you guys that are familiar with National Lampoon, y'all know what I'm talking about. So anyway, um, again, I, I want to apologize for not having a video out there. I want to try to do better, but I can't make any promises between now and Christmas of how much I'll get out, and surely you understand that. So other than that, I want to thank you guys so much for your patience and so much for uh, watching uh, my videos. I appreciate it, and subscribing and sharing them if, if you think that's appropriate. I do want to say that I finally uh, broke uh, 100,000 views. I think I'm up to nearly 102,000 now. So. That's pretty exciting. I didn't know that. I, I, I can't believe, you know, 100 people watching this stuff, much less uh, my stuff being watched 101, 102,000 times, you know, combined. So I'm excited about that. I'm getting really close to that 1,000 subscriber mark. I think I'm about 80 or 85 away. So that's pretty exciting. And we'll see what the new year has to offer. So uh, pretty soon, I think you're going to see... Um, uh, video on the uh, next next portion of the uh, Kenneth Wells uh, stationary engine bill which will be the fuel pipe supply pipe the uh, the wicks and that sort of stuff and also uh, I got a question the uh, anybody have any suggestions or ideas what to use for um, wicks uh, the uh, the wick tubes are made out of a 7 16 OD 3 8 ID brass tube uh, so, you know, I need something, you know, three-eighths or a little smaller or whatever to fit down into the wick tubes. And I think they're about an inch long. So, uh, I'm looking for some suggestions for that. So, uh, rather than keep rambling and uh, carrying on, I'll, uh, I'll let you guys go. And thanks again for watching. And uh, if, if you uh, like the content, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. And uh, other than that, have a very blessed day.